Hi everybody, Ken Abrera here talking leadership and coaching up and today I want to talk about the idea of running naked. And before I get to that intriguing subject, I want to share a number with you, two numbers actually that I found absolutely astounding. That is 50,000 and 70,000. That's the range, the number of thoughts a human being will conjure up in a day. That can be a very powerful number if you're able to manage your thoughts, but it can also be a very debilitating number if you can't manage your thoughts, which segues to the idea of running naked. Back in the day when I was running marathons with the Teen Diabetes uh, Initiative, I was running marathons in Honolulu and in Barcelona. Those Sunday long training runs that everybody had to endure is something that I absolutely hated. I didn't mind so much the running. What I didn't mind is all the preparation, all the stuff I had to go in to make that run successful. I had my iPod on with all my music and I had my heart monitor and my watch telling me how fast and how slow and my distance and all kinds of information that seemed pertinent at the time and I had my water belt with water and Gatorade and you know, gels and I had Advil as well and and I never really enjoyed those long distance runs because there's just too many variables, too many things that can go wrong to really screw up the experience. So in the recent past I started running naked and what that means is that I don't wear the iPod, the water belt, and I don't wear the heart monitor and the watch. And essentially what I do is I have a quick stretch and then I'll start running. And I'll listen to the noise slash messaging that my body delivers. So if my hips are tight, if my hamstrings are tight, my IT band, my knee, what have you, I will stop and stretch. And I will continue this process of running, stopping and stretching until I get beyond the noise where my pace is a little more in sync, my breathing pattern is calm, my timing's better, and I'm no longer thinking externally about all kinds of stuff outside of my scope, my being, and now I've shifted to a zone where the endorphins have kicked in, and now it's more of an internal experience, because once I get to that internal experience, I'm not thinking about the run. Uh, I can go a couple of kilometers and not remember anything that I had passed and had seen or, or heard along the way because I'm so focused internally where I am uh, taking advantage of the endorphins that have kicked in and I'm able to start problem solving, strategizing and looking at things differently from a, a leadership standpoint, from a parenting standpoint, from a husband standpoint. Uh, I'm able to communicate and collaborate and conquer while I'm in that zone and uh, it's a very powerful place. Now the reason why I bring that up is because uh, from a leadership and coaching standpoint, oftentimes, again, leadership and coaching is not easy. And sometimes we want to lock ourselves into a silo and not listen to any of the noise. We don't want to approach the noise. We may solve some things in that silo. We'll garner some semblance of success, but really uh, to enjoy a, a great degree of success, you have to attack the noise. You have to embrace the noise and get beyond it until your endorphins kick in when you start seeing things differently. And the only way you problem solve is to be able to face that problem head on. If you're a mountain climber, you know that climbing a mountain is not easy. But once you get to the summit, it's not like you quit mountain climbing. You go look for taller mountains. You look for greater challenges. And that's what embracing the noise allows you to do. It allows you to develop good habits, problem solving habits. So then now you can strategize. You can be like a Navy SEAL and you can adapt and overcome. And uh, you can really be in the moment. And that's the real reward. It's a, there's a win-win scenario. One, the physical win of, for me when I run was getting to that place where the endorphins kicked in. So now physically I feel pretty good about things. And then the second victory is shifting into that zone where I'm able to, again, problem solve, strategize, and, and, and get some things accomplished, which makes the run a real valuable experience, uh, both physically and uh, internally in terms of my own emotion and my own psychology. So uh, that's why I run naked. That's what running naked means. So if you're a leader or a coach, uh, by all means, embrace the noise. I'm not suggesting you go and start running marathons. What I am, though, I suggest that you find your place, that place. It may be the art gallery. It may be a museum. It may be a, a coffee shop you've never been to where it's your place where you can embrace the noise versus avoid the noise. And uh, if you can do that, you're well on your way to uh, garnering some new uh, new success, some new victories, and uh, success begets success, and confidence begets confidence, and that's what, for me, what running naked does. So, uh, thank you for taking time to listen to me and spending time with me. If you want more information about what I do from a leadership, uh, or team building, or a keynote speaking standpoint, visit my website www.kenabrer.com, or you can simply email me ken at kenabrer.com for more information. I hope you're having a good day, and I'll talk to you soon.
Yeah.